Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about BitTensor again. Today we're going to cover the Tau token as well as the future of BitTensor. If you haven't already, go and watch part one. That's where you'll get a really good understanding and overview of what BitTensor actually is, as well as the various different subnets. We cover them in quite some depth and hopefully by the end of that video, you'll get a good understanding of how BitTensor works. And then this will make a lot more sense, especially when we go into detail regarding the Tau token. So. Uh, Tau is a native token for BitTensor. Uh, it has a max supply of 21 million, so it really follows uh, the Bitcoin uh, BTC token model, actually, uh, almost to the same extent because uh, it has halvings as well uh, and, and essentially ha you know, works the exact same way. So the first halving for BitTensor is going to be in September 2025. At the moment, uh, for every 12 seconds, one tau is emitted. Um, and uh, after September 2025, this rate will essentially half. Now, current supply is actually, as of recording, 6.9 million uh, with a max supply of 21 million. So yeah, um, high inflation at the moment. Currently, every uh, 12 seconds, we have one tau. Ultimately, uh, this means that we have around 7,200 Tau tokens daily emitted. Now, $400, um, which at the time of recording is approximately where we are, um, this is just under $3 million of daily inflation. And annualized, this means that we have $1 billion of inflation for the Tau token, quite substantial amount. Uh, but we'll kind of talk about why the Tau token is needed and potentially look into the demand and su supply and demand uh, dynamics shortly. So the Tau token plays a, a really critical role in how BitTensor works because um, uh, as for those of you who've watched part one, incentives are, are needed, right? Uh, and there are incentives for miners and validators as well as subnet owners, actually. So like, why do you even need the Tau token? Well, in order to actually access or create your own subnet, you actually need the Tau token. And then uh, secondly, you know, we've got uh, other kind of sub functions, including staking and governance. But I think these first two points, access or ownership, as well as incentives are kind of where Tau's value really comes from. Um, this is the chart uh, as of, well, around at the moment. I think um, it's probably trading a little bit below this now, actually. Um, but yeah, uh, 2.7 billion or just uh, just around that uh, ultimately gives us a FTV of just under 10 billion, which to be fair is quite a lot. It is it is a fair amount. Um, but I, I think hopefully when we look into this a little bit more, maybe it seems overvalued, maybe it seems undervalued. We'll soon find out. Anyway, how much inflation are we getting? So as I mentioned, we're going to get uh, we're going to go from like 6.8 million to around 9.4 million uh, in around one year's time. And so the circulating market cap is going to jump quite a lot. With with an extra 2.6 million Tau tokens coming into circulation, um, this is basically an extra 1 billion, just over a billion dollars of inflation. Um, are we going to be able to soak this up? Are we going to be able to eat this up? Will we have enough bids coming in the market to maintain this price? Well, obviously, we'll have to find out. Um, so how do you actually register a subnet? Uh, this, the cost actually changes. And you can see like over time, like when BitTensor was in its infancy, the cost of registering wasn't so high, but this really spiked up uh, kind of as we peaked in back in March. And kind of now now that we're in May and June, um, this has kind of settled a little bit, but it's kind of uptrending again. So we'll talk about this as well now. So regist re registering a subnet. Subnets can be registered by anyone who are willing to lock up Tau for the duration of the subnet's existence. And each subnet uh, is owned by a unique wallet ID. Um, upon creation, the value of the Tau is drained from your wallet and it basically is attached to the subnet instead. And if the subnet is ever deregistered, the Tau is returned. So the owners of these subnets are basically like admins. Um, they can basically set up certain parameters uh, around the network and generally uh, basically around 18% of emissions are returned uh, on stake Tau to the subnet owners. Now, how much does it cost? Well, initially, it actually costed 2,500 Tau tokens. However, when a new subnet is registered, the cost is actually doubled. Now, what you might think is that eventually this is just going to go all the way up like this, right? And eventually it's just going to become absolutely ridiculous and just not feasible whatsoever to register a subnet. Well, that's not the case because as blocks progress, the lock cost falls block by block at a constant rate, halving every two weeks. 
so yeah every two weeks essentially the 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 cost the lock cost this initial lock cost um will actually fall uh, by half and so yeah if we if we go like months and months and months without any new subnets being registered yeah the cost of registration will be very very low um, so yeah, all, all basically supply and demand at the moment, there is a significant demand to register a subnet and hence why this cost is generally been increasing. Sami Kassab, a subnet on BitTensor that launched yesterday with a well-written white paper and tested code base has already gotten deregistered. Just goes to show how competitive it's already getting for these limited subnet slots and the high quality standard needed to keep one. And so basically the point I'm trying to make is because uh, these, because there's only a limited number of subnets, right? Uh, at the moment, it's actually been increased to 64. You, you can't just create unlimited subnets is what I'm trying to say. So what that means is if a subnet isn't very good, uh, it will essentially get kicked off and a new one will come in. And so there are consistently, we're consistently seeing new subnets uh, kind of coming up. And you can see like, look, new ones, well-written white papers and tested code base, like literally launched a day ago uh, before Sammy tweeted this and already gotten deregistered. So yeah, very, very competitive. Now, Tau can actually be used in DeFi. You can actually stake it natively to earn around 18 to 20% APY. Uh, there is liquid staking now and there's lots of different liquid staking protocols popping up left, right and center. So you can actually use Tau, well, stake Tau, which is yield generating in DeFi. You can go to Pendle, you can trade the yield, you can buy at a discount. There's uh, bridges now now for Tau where you can move it from the native chains to like Ethereum or kind of other chains. There's Tau pubs where you can trade on Hyperliquid in 10x and various other markets as well. There's lending markets as well where you can lend Tau, you can earn yield, you can leverage up. There's a whole range of different strategies for you for, for Tau in DeFi. So I thought I'd just mention this as well for any of you watching who are interested in the concept of earning yield on your tokens. Now What's the future of Tau? Uh, I think this is something that a lot of people are excited about. And the main thing is the subnet expansion. Now, at the start, I mentioned that currently there's 32 plus subnets. And that's because at the moment, subnets are increasing and they're going to increase every uh, by a factor of four every week until we get to 64. So in the coming months, we will eventually get to 64 subnets. And hopefully this lets you know, an even wider range of participants join the network and help to create you know some interesting innovative ai applications perhaps one day we'll even have thousands of subnets on bittensor and i think this is also a good thing because it also means that rewards kind of get spread out across more people uh, and uh, yeah i think it will also help to increase the competition so yeah super excited for this uh, and uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see some very very interesting subnets coming out in due time um, the other main update coming out is around Dynamic Tau, and this is a big upgrade to the Tau tokenomics. Now, at the moment, essentially, the person or the people who decide the Tau emissions to all of the different subnets is a little bit centralized. Uh, we call them root validators, and they're responsible for voting on this allocation. And right now, the top five root validators control 60% of the token supply emissions. And yeah, this is like not a very good thing at the moment. Uh, we do need to kind of help improve this. And so there is a there, there is a, a proposal upgrade, and I think this is coming fairly soon, uh, called Dynamic Tower, which basically helps to solve this by focusing on making emissions less centralized and based on market demand. So how do we decide like what the market demand is going to be for all of these different subnets? Well, each subnet will have its own token, and this is how they're going to decide it. Uh, so each of these native uh, subnets, whether it's subnet 5, whether it's subnet 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way to 34, 36, eventually 64, they'll all have their own token. And this is like a non-transferable, like non-sellable token, really. These tokens will be paired with Tau, uh, and they'll be put into a liquidity pool. And emissions to the various different subnets will be based on the market cap of these individual subnets. So higher quality subnets will have a higher market cap and therefore will get more emissions. Now these Tau tokens, or I should say these Tau subnet LP, these uh, subnet tokens are non-transferable outside of this LP. And this is to ensure Tau's value. So I've made a little graphic here to just 
kind of highlight how this works. So each subnet has a token which is paired with tau in an LP. This cannot be transferred out of the system. And so if there's like a lot of demands, oh, subnet five is the new crazy thing. It's so good. I need to buy it, right? Uh, what happens is there will be people who will start buying this subnet five tau, uh, subnet five token uh, by using their tau tokens, right? And so what you'll find is that if this is the case, the market cap of these tokens will go up in relation to its tau in the, in the LP. And so... There is a lot of game theory here because miners who receive subnet tokens, they they shouldn't dump because if they dump the subnet tokens, then the market cap is going to go down and then they're not going to get as many emissions. And so this is like a really interesting thing because like they're kind of more likely to hold on to their tau uh, because, you know, they don't want to really reduce it. In fact, they might even want to buy the subnet tokens to kind of increase it. Uh, and this also creates like a whole range of new strategies, subnet arbitrage and all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think this is a pretty cool concept, uh, especially because these subnet tokens like can't be sold, can't be transferred. They're just like stuck within this LP. Um, so yeah, this is coming fairly soon. Um, will there be a bit of dilution in potentially? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, uh, d will we just have like 30, 40 new tokens that people are kind of competing for now instead of Tau. Will will some value be taken away from Tau because like people are buying the individual subnets instead? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, this is just something that I'm thinking about. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is one of the new updates and I thought I'd try and explain it to you guys too. Uh, let's also talk about the team. Uh, so we've got Const, uh, who is basically the, the founder. Uh, definitely recommend checking him out. He does some really good talks as well uh, on Twitter Spaces as well from time to time. We've got Jacob as well, one of the founders. Uh, Allah as well, uh, Allah Shabana. And the Open Foundation as well, which is a basically essentially a non-profit organization behind BitTensor. I think where people get a lot of value will definitely come from the community. And I think the BitTensor community is probably like none other that I've seen, uh, especially at this level. Um, so like the community have built a massive collection of resources, videos, blogs, articles, um, you know, all kinds of stuff really to really help provide you with information, data uh, and news all about BitTensor. So we've got the BitTensor hub over here, which do some incredible videos, fairly frequently these are often long form there's a bittensor org which is a blog bittensor wiki uh, we've got community members like the the corsell founder called mog machine definitely recommend giving him a follow we've got uh, mr phoenix here which is like a community member who does some great uh uh, Tau videos as well. Um, yeah, this is like one of the vlogs as well where you can learn a lot about BitTensor and some of the different subnets and all kinds of things like that. But yeah, Tau Stats is probably one of the best places to go. I think there you can see all kinds of data uh, around all of the different subnets, emissions, validators, uh, whatever you want, you can basically find it there. So Tau, Tau Stats is definitely one of my favorites. So I highly recommend going to check that one out. Uh, here's the BitTensor Wiki where you can learn about each of the different subnets too. You can learn about some of the stuff that we've talked about in this video as well. So yeah, uh, non, I haven't really seen uh, like a, a crypto community really create such an incredible educational environment like this. Um, so yeah, bullish for me, bullish for me. Um, so yeah, I think we'll leave it there for part two. Um, let me know if you have any questions. We covered a lot around the Tau token. In the next video, we're going to cover part three, which is going to be the bull and bear case, something that I like to do in all of my deep dive videos. So make sure you go and watch that one. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back for part three.